All right, welcome to the uh, February developer call for Open Bazaar. Uh, this this call is being recorded and then uploaded uh, to the Open Bazaar YouTube for posterity's sake, uh, as well as the chat. So uh, we did not meet last month, so there's quite a bit of stuff to go through. Uh, at any point, feel free to jump in and ask questions either in the uh, in the chat or just if you have a mic, that's fine. So uh, there have been two releases on the Open Bazaar side um, since the last dev meeting. 2.3.7 was a hot fix because there were issues with Zcash. Um, we had to change the Zcash branch ID to be compatible with their new hard fork, their Blossom hard fork. I don't believe there are any client changes in 2.3.7 at all. It was only on the server side and it was just to fix Zcash. Uh, and then 2.3.8 came out in uh, mid-January, and that was primarily in order to uh, fix order issues that we had. So it was, again, mostly server-side changes. I'm going to move on. So on the Haven side, there have been two main releases. I think there's been a couple minor, but two primary releases uh, in the past few months. One is the 1.2.12 release. And that was a significant release because it fundamentally changed the way that the social uh, dynamic of, of Haven is done. Uh, but formerly, it was solely a, a uh, social feed that um, is able that was able to sort of be a global feed, and now it's changed to personalized feeds. You can still do the global feed, but people you follow, you will automatically be able to. Uh, to see them, uh, their updates. And also in 1.2.12 was push notifications, which did not exist previously. So now you can get notifications for, for various activities happening with, within the app. The 1.2.13 release also added backup and restore uh, features. This was only a few weeks ago now. But um, you've always been able to back up your seed for your coins within Haven, but now you can actually back up the store data itself because um, the seed will only get you uh, so far, but the backup naturally uh, restores all or uh, saves and lets you restore all of your data. That's on the Haven side. Uh, other issues or other things that we have been working on. Uh, one thing is the infrastructure. Uh, we've made substantial improvements and I, when I say we, mostly Josh, Josh is on the call, thanks Josh, uh, has made substantial improvements to the admin interface. Um, there are all kinds of administrative things that we sort of do to make sure the network you know, functions properly. And um, it's been kind of hodgepodge in the past and Josh has taken some time to improve that, which we appreciate. Um, there's also been efforts to uh, create a blockchain scraping tool um, which basically lets us look back through the blockchains of various coins that we use and try to get a sense for how much economic activity has been happening in OpenBazaar. Now, that's somewhat limited because it only works for moderated transactions. Uh, it does not work for direct transactions. Um, but, I mean, it's still useful to look back through and sort of see what's been happening. Um, and also the tools to view that data as well. So that's been neat to see. Um, the bulk of the work that's, that has occurred other on the, on the server side, other than the uh, releases that we talked about, is the Ethereum integration work. And there is light at the end of the Ethereum tunnel. Um, there has been a lot of effort put in to create sort of strict acceptance criteria to make sure that we know that this is actually working properly. And we are now in the testing cycle. Um, so most of the work has been done uh, and really it's at this point where we're just trying to make sure that all that acceptance criteria has been met and that the testing results show you know things are uh, things are as they should be. Um, we've worked to improve the you know the quality assurance test stuff broadly speaking. Um, mostly it was done 
because the ETH changes are you know fairly significant and touch a lot of the app, we want to make sure that that's done properly. But hopefully, that effort will pay off beyond ETH. After ETH is done, uh, our our QA stuff is just better than it was previously. And, and then there's been discussion as well after the Ethereum stuff is done, which has been obviously the the main effort for a long time. Where do we go? And so we're just trying to start talking about now what what um, the server side stuff looks like after ETH. Um, that's primarily what we have done over the past few months. Um, moving forward, naturally getting ETH you know tested and 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 released is the is the primary focus. As I said, deciding what we're going to work on next after Ethereum uh, is where we go as well. And uh, I'm not really sure on the Haven side what big upcoming features there are, actually. I don't know if anyone on the call is familiar with that, but since the backup restore functionality was released, I'm, I'm not sure what's next in queue. Um, if anyone is uh, is curious about that, jump on our Slack and, and ask. I'm sure uh, Washington especially would, would be happy to tell you where that's headed. Um, there is one community thing worth mentioning, which is a, a new search engine that I believe is based out of China. Uh, I don't know if it's actually a new engine or if it's a rebranded one, but I know one of the uh, people in the community who's very active has been uh, has been sharing it around to folks. That's about it on my side thus far. A anyone on the Obi One team? Do you have anything that uh, that I've missed that we've been working on or will be working on it on the near future that should be mentioned? It doesn't sound like it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me any better now or not. Yes, I can. Um, okay. Yeah, we've uh, we've been talking a lot about um, wallet integrations. Obviously, there have uh, there was a Monero uh, implementation that was put up uh, several months ago, which is continuing to be maintained through the changes that uh, we've applied since Ethereum, and we're starting to uh, think very carefully about how we might be able to open up our wallet interface uh, to support more different types of currencies. And uh, that's a conversation that is uh, ongoing in our Slack, so I encourage anyone who's interested in contributing to that conversation to join there. Um, but we are having lots of uh, discussions about what those next steps might look like. So uh, any who uh, would like to see an alternative currency be used on the OpenBazaar marketplace, this would be a good time to jump into that conversation so that we can make sure that uh, other considerations that might not be top of mind for us could be uh, included in the discussion. You are now unmuted. Yeah, thanks, Mike. And the most effective way to do that right now is via our Slack. And um, that, yeah, that's just the best place to, to, to start that. So. Uh, I see that uh, Rostislav has a question that they are about the discovery page. They're trying to build one and asking if we have resources for it. Is it open source? Um, so the discover, I'm going to, I think you mean the, the sort of discover tab within the OpenBazaar client. Um, yes, everything in the OpenBazaar client's open source. The discovery page is sort of interesting because it depends on how the search provider um, offers up their their results. Um, so you'll notice if you have different search providers that the, the main page there looks different based on who you choose. And that's because providers have some flexibility in how they can uh, manipulate the content. So OB1 is the default, and that's that page with the categories you know that you see. Uh, other providers don't have that categorization um, and, and look different. Uh, there is a OBIP, so an Open Bazaar Improvement Proposal that uh, that lays out what that needs to look like. I think that's sufficient to be able to create such a page, um, but I'm not. I don't know if that's definitively true. Uh, Josh, I don't know if you're able to to uh, speak to this or not. Yeah, the the OBIP should have everything you, you need in it. You are now okay. Unmuted. Perfect. So I will. Um, I think you've just been added to the Slack group, Rostislav. So I will find that OBIP link. Nope, didn't need to. Mike's already on it. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Uh, if you look at that link in the uh, public chat, that should have that information. 
So please go. If, if, uh, yeah, go ahead. You know, if, if there's anything unclear in the OBIP, you can also open the web dev panel in the desktop client. And if you just look at you are the now uh, calls going back and forth when you do a search using the regular search provider, uh, they pretty much have all the details you need. If you just mirror that, it'll it should work fine. Thank you guys for information. Basically, we want to just create some a search provider based on this structure, and we are trying to find out what we need to install on the server. There are any resources basically help for us. And uh, I'm just curious about the OB1, how you build it, and what you are using in this uh, structure that can help us a lot. You are now on. Yeah, oh, it's great to hear. I mean, it's, we always love having new search providers come in. Um, yeah, I mean, the OBIP should give you the, the core structure, but if you have questions beyond that uh, about what we've done, why we've done it that way, if, feel free to uh, to hit us up in the Slack. Yeah, I mean, at, a, at a very high level, uh, what we did is we built some crawlers that crawl the entire OpenBazaar network, and they pipe all the listings we find into Elasticsearch on Amazon. And from there, we query Elasticsearch uh, to create the search results. So, I mean, it's honestly relatively simple. Um, I know there, are, you know, there's other ways to do it. Uh, the big thing is you will need a crawler to go out and find all the listings and then something to take that data and transform it back into the, uh, responses. You are now on. Yeah. And, and, um, there's also work done to make sure that we're compliant with the sort of platforms that we're on. So OB1 search is the only search that's within the Haven application. And because Haven needs to comply with App Store rules uh, for Google and iOS, we, uh, it's not the only reason, but we, we choose to uh, censor content on the OB1 network. And obviously, you know, things like filtering and reporting tools and all that stuff is in there too. So, I mean, it depends on, on your needs as to how, you know, how much that that is necessary, but that's a pretty significant part of, of how it's set up as well. Yes, I saw only one provider. It's basically OB1. There is also some uh, other ones that just, I'm not sure if it's working or not, then I think it really helps uh, building the new one and integrate uh, to the open bazaar. But uh, we are trying to just start it from the base and. That's why I'm just asking this uh, technical question to find out what we need to build. Uh, you mentioned like Elasticsearch yeah. and also AWS, you that you are hosting it there. And um, maybe this is uh, somehow flexible for us. Then we can choose what we want. And uh, maybe you have some manual, how we, how we built it or something like that, that will also help us. But I will study your link and maybe we will find some more information Right now, I, I can find so much information about that on your website, but maybe I'm not looking uh, well into the searching results. Now, I will you... find out. Yeah, so... Hey, Sam? Yeah, go ahead, Josh. Sam, do you, there's at least one open source compatible search engine out there. Yeah, that's what I was about to mention. Um, so there, there, are, there are not a lot of details about the OB1 search because that is not open source. That's something that we, we do ourselves. Um, however... Um, Rod, who just joined the call, has released an open source search engine uh, called Raw Flood. And I know, Rod, that you had been looking at, at either updating it or t doing something new with that. I can't remember the status of that. But it is an open source search engine that I know works. Uh, at least one search provider is using it now. I'm pretty sure Search Bazaar uses Raw Flood. Um, and MG just posted the link. Thanks for doing that. So that that certainly is a uh, you know something you can uh, you can investigate. I'd also say that our Slack, our Slack channel is a great resource for getting more information. Rod Keys is active there as well as the development team, and we're pretty responsive to questions if you have any. Yeah, and I'll add real fast. So I'm Rod. I'm the person who developed the raw flood that was linked in chat. <laughs> Um, it was just kind of like a quick search engine um, that I put together. It was no means, you know, super professional, um, but it is a good example for just seeing how to crawl the network. Um, and I fully encourage you to check it out and maybe build on top of it. 
Um, but I think it's helpful for just an example of how to build a search engine. Thank you so much. I will check it and we will find out. If I will have any question, then I will ask in Slack. You are now great. unmuted. All right. Thanks for that update. That's uh, that's, that's great to hear. Um, Rod, uh, do you have anything you'd like to to add? Uh, what, what's what's been going on with all of your various efforts? You are now muted. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I joined the call late. Uh, I did not mean to. Um, I just got back a little later than expected. Um, so for Zoco, so what we're working on is just kind of getting ready for Ethereum. That's a huge, you know, um, refactor on my side for how I had it set up. Um, so that's actually eating up a lot of the time. And then the other part that we're working on is just getting the Amazon scrapers done. So that and we um, kind of refactored the code a bit. So um, stores now have all cryptocurrencies based on profile, similar to now OB1. Previously, you had to do it per listing. So when Ethereum comes out, users are just going to be able to click, you know, accept Ethereum, and it's going to go across all their stores. So a lot of little convenience things we've been working on the last few weeks. You are now Excellent. Unmuted. And that's basically it from my side. Okay, thank you. Um, and for those not in the know, Rod is the guy who runs Zocos, which lets you run uh, Open Bazaar stores via a web browser, Zocos.com. So if, uh, you know, please folks check that out. He's also, as, as Mike mentioned, uh, active in the Slack and generally very helpful. So thanks, Rod, for the update. Appreciate it. Okay, well, is there anyone else on the call who has any other questions or comments before we wrap this up? You are now muted. You are now unmuted. All right, I'm not hearing anything. Uh, if anyone does have other questions, uh, we keep talking about the Slack because that's the place to go. So please uh, uh, hit us up in there. And I hope everyone has a great month. Thanks for joining. See you all.